Hello. Today we're um, going to uh, try to talk a little bit about the in vitro cell culture system and some of the various factors that affect it. And I do want to emphasize that cell culture is clearly in vitro, not in vivo. Um, on the second um, slide, we'll note that uh, when cells are grown in vitro, uh, cells do grow outside the body. And of course, the interactions between various cell types and extracellular matrix is lost. Therefore, cells are primarily growing in two dimensions. Remember that naturally, uh, in most normal situations, we don't have a homogeneous population of cells. We actually have a mixture of cells that contribute. Uh, and they contribute via lots of different things, including paracrine signaling and so forth, which, is cor which of course, is altered uh, during uh, in vitro cell culture growth. Um, again, I, I want to point out that cell culture is in vitro, not in vivo. We do lose that histological, hormonal uh, regulation. Various nutritional components are missing. And of course, the ed energy metabolism is altered in vitro versus in vivo. We know, for example, that in vivo, most uh, cells get their energy from, from the breakdown of glucose. In cell culture, we know that, that cell metabolism, metabolism is altered, and we get lots of the energy from the oxidative breakdown, oxidative metabolism of uh, glutamine. So basically, based on the disruption of the extracellular matrix, the sort of pushing of the potential of cells that have growth advantages and so forth, uh, we generally favor cells that have uh, flattening and spreading and migration. And uh, these are usually uh, unspecialized progenitor cells um, that, that lack differentiated functions. The good news, however, is that even though these in vivo, in vitro, uh, differences do exist. We still can use cells in culture, and they generally retain their specialized functions. And of course, cell culture we know is here to stay as model systems for various diseases and for studying and research and development and so forth. So as long as we know these limitations, I think we can work around them and still get a lot of useful data from growing cells in culture. Now, one of the things that, that is important in cell culture, as far as I'm concerned, is that uh, cell culture environment. And to me, pretty much everything constitutes the cell culture environment. Uh, and that can include things like the growth temperature, the nature of the growth substrate, whether the cells are on a hydrophobic or hydrophilic matrix, whether that matrix is negatively charged or positively charged, uh, the degree of confluency. Confluency is is the degree of contact, uh, is the ratio of surface area occupied by cells divided by the surface area available, uh, and of course times 100 to make that a percentage. And some cells like to be confluent. Some cells will differentiate if they're not confluent. Uh, so it depends on the cell type we're using. And then also things like uh, the nature of the plastic, the components and the concentration of uh, chemicals in the gas phase, the CO2, the oxygen and so forth. All these things uh, constitute the environment. Now, when we talk about environment, I want to focus on uh, cell attachment, because cell attachment is clearly a signal. And uh, cell attachment or cell adhesion uh, modulates or mediates many, many functions in cells, from the architecture to cell division to trafficking, apoptosis, protection from apoptosis. Uh, differentiation and all these sorts of things uh, are functions that are that are modulated by cell attachment. The important thing to remember is that cell attachment is not just simply attachment of a cell binding protein to a matrix protein. Cell adhesion or cell attachment or ad adherence is is known now to be a signal transduction uh, inducer. And there are multiple families of proteins that are uh, involved in cell attachment. These are uh, distributed different tissues uh, differentially. Different tissue has different attachment factors. Um, examples of attachment or adhesion proteins would be the integrins and the cadherins and the selectins and the Ig like cam molecules. These are the uh, predominant adhesion proteins in cells. 
I understand that you can't really read this um, uh, figure very well, but the, the point here is, is that there are molecules like integrin alpha and integrin beta which uh, have many, many interactions and contribute to multiple functions of the cell. This is a diagram just showing integrin alpha and integrin beta and all the various interactions that these proteins have, uh, have with various molecules such as the focal adhesion kinases, uh, these, these FAC proteins or the focal adhesion proteins come in, uh, these are, are, are molecules like adapter or GTPase proteins or signal transduction proteins. And so attachment is that the point here is, is that attachment is, is not just an adhesion of the cell to the attachment proteins, but adhesion in the right location is a signal for cell survival. Uh, when we look at cell-cell and cell matrix contact uh, interactions, we know that they're different. And we can tell this when we trypsinize cells, for example. We know that if the cells are highly confluent, those cells will probably, probably lift off the plastic before they'll separate from one another. Um, the cadherin molecules are generally involved in, in the cell-cell contact and confluency-related uh, growth inhibition. And one of the things I want to point out is that these cadherins form homophilic interactions between other cadherin molecules. And if you look at this diagram, you'll notice that the cadherin molecules also have calcium binding sites, which will become important in a minute. The start signals or the cell division signals occur when a cell attaches to the correct substrat, substratum, and that's integrin dependent. And if you'll notice, integrin molecules um, form, form heterophilic interactions. They form uh, heterodimers with, for example, alpha or beta integrin. And integrin molecules adhere to proteins like fibronectin and so forth that might be attached to the cell plastic. The fibronectin can come from uh, the serum in the protein. And again, I want you to notice that the um, integrin fibronectin interactions also have calcium uh, modulation. The point of this is, is that calcium is very, very important for cell adhesion, for cell growth, and for cell attachment. And that's one of the reasons that we deplete calcium and mag magnesium when we detach cells um, from plastic. So one of the points there is anytime you want to maintain cells associated with plastic, you want to keep the calcium present. Anytime you want to remove cells from plastic, you might want to wash with a balanced salt solution uh, without calcium and magnesium. Calcium and magnesium play critical roles in cell attachment and cell growth. The other thing I want to point out is that apoptosis, apoptosis is a very critical uh, part of cell growth, and apoptosis is a program cell death. And generally speaking, not all the time, but generally speaking, when cells fail to attach in the right location, cells will undergo uh, program cell death apoptosis in response uh, to loss of attachment or inappropriate attachment sites. Um, and you can understand from an, an in vivo point of view, this would protect the whole animal um, from cell proliferation or something that might not be un, that might be unwanted. But from a cell culture point of view, uh, these these lack of cell attachment signals can lead cells to, to die by apoptosis, which of course can lo lose. Uh, lead to a loss of productivity. In fact, there's a special word for apoptosis uh, that's induced by uh, inappropriate interactions externally to the cell, and this is called enochesis, which is the Greek word for homelessness. So finally, to put this into perspective, what I'd like to do is just show you kind of a general cell population relationship here, and what we're looking at here is the cell population, and, and, and your cell population might be re represented by the uh, high-density cell culture. It might be represented by the appropriate titers of viruses that you're getting or the amount of 
protein expression, but productivity, we generally think of that as uh, increase in cell population. And the cell population could be affected by many things, including the balance of cell death versus proliferation. Proliferation, as I've indicated, can be enhanced by positive environmental signals, um, positive growth factors or cyclin-dependent kinases or proliferation factors like MYC. Uh, it can be blocked by things like serum withdrawal. Serum withdrawal results in uh, synchronization of the cells followed by death by apoptosis, the loss of factors and so forth. Um, the cell population uh, can decrease if cell death occurs, and of course cell death can be uh, increased through necrosis, uh, bashing of cells into impellers and bioreactors, but mostly in cell culture, cell death occurs by apoptosis, programmed cell death, which results from a poor environment or the loss of cell signaling or attachment, the reduction in important nutrients, vitamins, amino acids, um, and things like that. So it's real important when we grow cells in culture to make sure that we add the right components, we give the cells the chance chance to attach under the right circumstances, we provide the right nutrients, and so forth. So I hope this um, has, has been a help. I hope we've learned a little bit about how cell culture is in vitro, uh, not in vivo, and some of the important um, characteristics of the cells that may mediate uh, this, this type of, of growth.